Erev Tov Rabotai, we're continuing with our Mishnah Yumi, Masechet Shabbat. We're up to Perik Aleph, Mishnah Vav. Today's Mishnah should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria ben Svetlana, Aran Baev, Neliyahu ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen. We are continuing our discussion regarding Bet Shemaim, Bet Hilel, things that a person can um, start doing before Shabbat, even though the Melacha, the work continues through Shabbat on its own. Bet Shemaim, Rim, Bet Shemaim, say, before Shabbat, we may not put bundles of flax into an oven unless there is enough time for them to become heated while it is still daytime on Friday. And the Mephoshim explain flax, which we know the fiber from which linen is made, would be heated in an oven to lighten its color. If one did this on Shabbat, he would be liable for the Melechav Melaben, whitening. So according to Bet Shammai, this is prohibited even before Shabbat because the oven will be doing the Melechan Shabbat. It is permitted only if there is enough time for the flax to become heated and whitened before Shabbat begins. And we may not put wool into a dyer's vat unless there is enough time for it to absorb the dye while it is still daytime on Friday. Bet Shemite forbid placing wool in a dyer's vat before Shabbat if the dyeing process will continue on Shabbat because then the vat will be doing the melechav tzviah of dyeing on Shabbat. Bet Hillel matirin, but Bet Hillel permit these activities even if there is not enough time for the process to be completed before Shabbat begins because like we taught in yesterday's Mishnah, Bet Hillel hold that the Torah does not forbid a person to let his vessels do melecha on Shabbat. Bet Shemayim Rim, Bet Shemayim say, En porsin mitzudot chaya veofot vedagim ele chidei sheitzodu mi beod yom. Before Shabbat, we may not set out traps for wild animals, birds, or fish, unless there is enough time for them to catch their prey while it is still daytime on Friday. And the Mephoshim explain, Bet Shemayim forbid a person to have his trap before the Merachav, trapping tzeda on Shabbat. If, however, it can be assumed that the trap will be full before Shabbat begins, because there are many animals in the area and the trap cannot hold more than one or two, Bet Shemai would permit one to set it before Shabbat, as the Tos would write in Sechet Shabbat, page 17b. But in general, the Mishnah is speaking generally, Bet Shemai do not allow a person to set out traps unless there is enough time for them to catch their prey while it's still daytime on Friday, because again, the trap will be performing the Menachav trapping of Tzedah on Shabbat. But Bet permit, Hillel permit one to spread traps even if there is not enough time for them to catch anything before Shabbat begins. And Mephoshim explained the Mishnah teaches here that Bet Hillel allow a person to have his vessels do Melechan Shabbat not only when they perform passively, so for example a bowl in which soaking occurs, but even when they perform the Melechan actively, as in the case of a trap that springs shut, still Bet Hillel allow it when you um, set it up before Shabbat, and then it does the melacha on its own on Shabbat, without your involvement. And that is in Rabotai of Mishnah Vav. Mishnah Zayin now cites another machloket dispute between Bet, Shira, Bet Shammai and Bet Hile that concerns what a person may do before Shabbat. This machloket, this dispute involves the Isud Rabbanan, the rabbinic prohibition of asking a non-Jew to work for a Jew on Shabbat. We know this prohibition of asking a non Jew, Amiral Enochri, applies not only on Shabbat but even before Shabbat. Therefore, a Jew may not ask a non Jew even before Shabbat to work for him on Shabbat. The Mishnah begins, Bet Shemai Amrim, Bet Shemai say, En Mochrin Lovet Kochavim, before Shabbat we may not sell an object to a non Jew, Ven Toaninimo, or help him load an object onto his animal, Ven Magbihin Alab, or lift an object onto him, so place it on his shoulders. Unless there is enough time for him to reach a nearby place before Shabbat begins, meaning that the non-Jew's destination is close enough, uh, close enough for him to reach before Shabbat. Because Bet Shammai forbid these activities if the non-Jew cannot reach his destination before Shabbat, because people who see the non-Jew or his animal carrying the object on Shabbat might think that the Jew has asked him to do so. Now since the non-Jew, the Mephoshim explained, since the non-Jew left the Jew's house carrying an object, or he had helped, uh, he had been helped by the, to tra- by the Jew to transport one, and then he is seen transporting it on Shabbat, it appears as if he's doing an errand for the Jew, and the Jew had asked him to transport on Shabbat, and therefore the Jew would be giving the appearance that he had broken the law, forbidding one task, a non-Jew to work for him 
on Shabbat. Bet Hillel Matirin, but Bet Hillel permit these activities because we are not afraid that people will make this mistake. And the Mephoshim explained, even according to Bet Hillel, however, there must be enough time for the non-Jew to leave the Jew's house before Shabbat begins. He doesn't have to reach his destination like Bet Shemai said, but he has to have enough time to leave the Jew's house before Shabbat begins because if people see him leave after nightfall, then they might think that the Jew had sold them the object on Shabbat which is forbidden, as the Mephoshim explained, the Mishnah, and that is the end of today's Mishnah. Amen.